So would you say that you have the scientific foundation now to cure diabetes? So that's a bold statement. Um, I would say that um, for the first time, we have a clear pathway that can be manipulated by easily available drugs that could, yes, have a long-term impact on, uh, on diabetes. So, so we have for many years now been interested in figuring out how the body replaces beta cells that are uh, destroyed or dysfunctional in diabetes. Uh, beta cell regeneration, so to speak. Um, we have um, pursued a number of different approaches to this and originally pursued the, the most common belief in the field, which was that uh, beta cells in, in an adult would be replaced by a recapitulation of the process by which they form during embryonic development. So we were originally um, pursuing this idea that uh, new islets, new beta cells would in the adult would arise from the duct, just as they do during um, embryogenesis. To study that, we and others in the field have uh, used damage models. If you want to study how a tissue or a cell regenerates, you have to damage it or experimentally and then look to see what happens. So there are a number of different damage models that people uh, have studied over, over the years, predominantly in, in rodents, in mice and, and, and rats. Um, we started uh, using those damage models in earnest 10 or 12 years ago um, with the idea, again, of just uh, sort of beginning by repeating what other people had done in the field and then building off of that. So we started with a model called duct ligation, where you tie off the pancreatic duct. This causes a massive destruction of tissue in the pancreas. And then many people had claimed that there was then regeneration of beta cells. We did that and did not see significant beta cell regeneration. Um, we saw tiny hints that maybe there was a little bit of something going on, but nothing dramatic. We couldn't tell the pre-existing beta cells from any new beta cells um, with any degree of um, accuracy. And what we decided to do was we decided to, in addition to tying off the duct, we would simultaneously destroy all of the pre-existing beta cells using a drug called aloxin. And um, when we did that, we saw massive formation of new beta cells. However, they weren't coming from the duct. It turned out when we looked carefully they were coming from the cells neighboring where the beta cells used to be in the islet. They were coming from these alpha cells. The alpha cells were, in effect, turning into beta cells, this process called transdifferentiation, right? One thing turning into another. That was pretty novel at the time. We published our first paper um, after a few years of working on this in 2010. So now we knew that you had to do two different things to get new beta cells to form. You had to cause this massive pancreatic destruction, pancreatitis, and you had to destroy all of the pre-existing beta cells. We did not know, though, what the signals were that were being sensed by the alpha cells to tell them to turn into beta cells. Obviously, there was some signal um, that, the, that pancreatic destruction was sending to the alpha cells. And also, there was a signal 
from the beta cells that was acting somehow on the alpha cells. Again, to say, to say to the alpha cells, oh, we're missing. There are no more beta cells. We need more of us. So what are those signals? So that's what we've been working on for the past number of years. Um, and we figured out the first of those signals a few years ago. It turns out that the digestive enzymes include a protease called trypsin. Trypsin acts on a receptor on the surface of alpha cells called the protease activated receptor. Trypsin is a protease to then start this transdifferentiation process. But by itself, it doesn't do anything. So if you take a drug that activates the protease activated receptor, so you're substituting trypsin with a, with a drug, um, nothing happens. On the other hand, if you activate this protease activated receptor called PAR2, and you eliminate the beta cells, then you got transdifferentiation. Then the alpha cells convert to the beta cells. So then the question became, what is the signal from the beta cells? Why do we need to get rid of the beta cells? What is it about the absence of beta cells that is speaking to the alpha cells and saying, OK, we need more beta cells, convert or transdifferentiate? So that's our most recent finding. We figured that out. Um, we tested a number of different uh, molecules secreted by beta cells. And it turned out that the, I guess, the obvious one was the correct one. It was insulin. It turns out that insulin acts on the protease-activated receptor on alpha cells to inhibit its activity. And if we use drugs that inhibit insulin secretion and action, and we activate PAR2, then the alpha cells will start to convert with nothing else being done. So this is a purely drug-based approach, um, using drugs that one can, that some of which are, are clinically used, and some of which you can buy from any chemical supply house. Um, so that, that was our most recent finding, and really is the culmination of, of a dozen years of, of work. There are two paths that one could take going forward. One is to understand at a deeper level what exactly is happening when you activate PAR2 and inhibit insulin secretion. What is the, what is the molecular uh, trigger? Well, so we know the trigger, but what are the pathways downstream of PAR2 that are, that are uh, involved in having an alpha cell turn into a beta cell? So that's a, a basic science kind of question. The second road that one could go down is what are the experiments we need to do to actually move this into the clinic? And those involve things such as dose optimization. Um, how much of these drugs do we need to give? For how long do we need to give them um, in different animal models? We've worked in mice so far. Well, how about moving up to rats? How about moving up to non-human primates? Uh, so all of those things uh, could be done. There are uh, non-human primate models, for example, of type 2 diabetes. It turns out that uh, non-human primates, just like human beings, have a tendency to overeat, get fat, and develop type 2 diabetes. So uh, there are uh, even non-human primate uh, models where one could test these uh, various interventions, but you have to know what are the doses, what are the duration. So that's a, a very different pathway than the basic science. And they're not mutually exclusive. One could per pursue them in, in parallel if one had the a large amount of resources necessary.